Hey guys, welcome to part one of my chat with Sorab Kushishai, aka Sofit, where I dig into the whole vibe of how we feel versus how we look when it comes to fitness and a bunch of other things. So before we head into part one, I want you to smash that bell icon and hit subscribe. We're going straight into my chat with Sorab. Hey Sarab, welcome to Take a Pause. Uh, I'm excited that we're doing this. Hey Varun, uh, equally excited. I'm not. Uh, I've I've been on the other side when it comes to talking to people about health, but never been behind the mic. So this should be interesting. I I still remember, and and, and I know I was kind of thinking about um, just the whole fitness mindset right the other day. And um, you and I have. Uh, I mean, I mean, you guys have been a part of my fitness evolution over the last six eight months or so because. Um, I found a love for fitness beyond what it used to be uh, a couple of years ago. But I think in the last six eight months, I've really focused on performance. I've really focused on um, a bunch of things, and and a lot of that's come from I think the conversations we've had, the work I've done with you um, and, and the team at SoFit. Um, but I want to kind of start off by asking you: Was uh, physical activity, fitness, always uh, a love? Was it always something which you gravitated towards? I mean, um, ever since I was a kid, I think for me, uh, movement has been a part of my life from the day I can remember. I've always been obsessed with with just moving, with just playing a sport or doing something. So in that sense, it's it's been in my system since I was a kid. I think uh, we were lucky. Our generation was a little lucky. We came up in a generation where the TV wasn't as prevalent, uh, the internet wasn't as prevalent. Mm. So if you wanted to kind of do things with your life, you just had to go down and play. Uh, you couldn't sit at home and you'd get bored after a point in time. Um, and sport was something that that I kind of naturally gravitated towards. Um, cricket being my 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 choice, uh, but uh, it was just it was just a way of life for me. Yeah? It's never been a it's never been it's not like someone's ever forced me to do it. I think it's just been a natural mm-hmm. progression. I entered, I started training, entered a gym at the age of 13 or 14 with my friends for the first time. Uh, and I've not looked back since. Yeah. You know, that's an interesting age, right? I think at 13, 14, and I remember the first time I went to the gym. Um, I feel we all went to a gym we found and the first thing you wanted to do was bench press and biceps. I think that's what we all hmm. grad. That is technically what all of us would do, right? You'd say, okay, can I do bench press? Can I do uh, bicep curls? And you just do that, feel happy about it, come back. When, and weirdly enough, physical activity, at least for me in school was like, okay, fine, we have to do it. Um, it wasn't really, I think, yeah. so I, I, I think I came from a very surface level perception of fitness. I think a lot of us yeah. have that. Um, yeah. And And I know you speak about the fact that it's not just about um, looking at it from a surface level. Um, yeah. But let's say if I'm someone today who's like, okay, I've, I want to look at this in a different way. I don't want to look at this the way I seem to have looked at it. Something like this vanity metrics, okay, uh, this is my yeah. bicep size or this is, uh, you know, and all that stuff. So was that a conscious shift that you went through and how, and how do you kind of tell people about this shift? Because I think that's a super important one to kind of uh, tap onto. First, I mean, let's not lie, okay? We all get into it for vanity. Every single human being. I think it's. Uh, I think most of us would be lying if we said that we went to a gym just for the sake of it or just because we enjoyed it. No. When we all started out, me included, uh, it was vanity, okay? Um, yeah. Slowly, as you kind of get better at it, things change, right? then performance becomes more important because how long are you going to keep looking at yourself in the mirror? I mean, I shouldn't be asking that question. I'm pretty sure people can do that all the time. But (laughs) the point is, you know, performance becomes another high you start chasing. Then you start looking at numbers in terms of your own performance, in terms of how much you're lifting or, or, or how you're moving and how quickly you're moving. And all those things start taking over. Um, and it's fine to kind of start in one particular direction. It's fine to enter the gym because you want to look a certain way. I don't think people should kind of categorize that as the bad thing. I think it's totally fine uh, as long as it gets you through that door. Because once it gets you through that door and once you see yourself change over a period of time, right, Varun, you, your, I mean, you yourself will kind of keep pushing the button. 
right? If you included, right? We had a conversation first a few months, maybe even a year back, where you were worried about your size and and you know how you were going to develop. You did something for a bit, then you stopped. Then you came back in. You said, okay, let me try this. You started seeing change in terms of performance, in terms of the way you were kind of shaping up, and now. I don't think with you it's vanity anymore. I think with you now it's just that feeling of That's I feel good about myself now. There is a there is an there's an innate amount of confidence that comes to every individual when they are fitter, right? And I can't explain that. That's just a self confidence that comes around. I've seen so many people not confident about themselves at all, whatever. They're constantly shy. The minute they become like fitter and fitter and they get better at themselves. Suddenly, that confidence is skyrocketing, right? and then they can carry themselves out in a room. So half your battles won, right? Think about it. When you kind of go out in in the public, half your battles won if you're physically confident about the way you carry yourself, and then everything else kind of flows from it. So my my take on this is, you know, don't kind of worry about why the person comes in. Get them through that door once they've kind of come in. then change their mindset this fitness is a lifestyle fitness for me is is just the way i'm going to live my life right it's just and and unfortunately only in india from what i have seen only in india is is it a place where it's become like a luxury everywhere else in the world it's a necessity it's just a way of life you get up you brush your teeth you go to work the same way you go train you go to work you do everything you have to do and no one really questions it um and and hopefully we will get there uh, as as people uh and and then things will change things will hopefully be a lot better uh, there are a few things you just said i want to dig a little deeper into right um one of them was the fact yeah. that how you feel physically in terms of how confident you feel um and most times people kind of relate that to how you look visually um i think i've seen some people yeah. who are genuinely fit who might still not necessarily seem fit from the traditional sense right i mean um but they're so confident because they can kind of like yeah. i think somehow the way you stand the way you walk everything kind of changes because yeah. you just you, you can you know how every part of your body is functioning um uh, and but that understanding is is why a lot of people don't have the confidence to even start like i've spoken to people who like okay there's no point i haven't been physically fit for like 10 15 years um is there any point in me yeah. starting i anyway can't do all these things um you know maybe i should yeah. just go for a walk every day and and my response has been it's not visually there um and but that's a barrier right i mean i'm sure you face that with a lot of people who kind of uh, sign up yeah no so let's let's take this first right this is my biggest uh, one of the one of the questions i get or one of the things i get a lot of is i'm not fit enough to train that if you actually look at it it's pretty ironic <laughs> right you, if if you were fit enough to train then you would be training anyway so you can never yeah. become fit enough to train you've got to go out there the one thing that you want people to understand is that these people you look at and you say i can't do what they're doing they were as bad as you at some point in time in their life okay they made the effort they went out there they went through the grind because it is a grind fitness is a grind fitness is not a one stop like let's start today let's be in two months i'll be where i want to be then i can stop again no it's a grind you it's it's like a marathon it's not a sprint and the one thing i tell people is you know even when they come to camp oh i'm not fit enough for camp yet i said what does that even mean right you're never going to be fit enough for camp unless you come to camp you've got to come there and go through that to understand whether you can handle it or not and yes you will it will suck the first few times you will not do it really well you may like feel like oh my god what the hell am i doing but as you mm. keep going on your body will adjust you your mind will adjust and you will start enjoying it you will start feeding off energy and that's the one thing you want people to do right i want this one of the reasons why i kind of try and focus and and with again now i'm going to start focusing a lot more on beginners is because you want to get rid of this stigma of training right yeah. that that to me is the one thing i i feel is that people get very conscious because i got conscious when i walked into the gym for the first time in my life at the age of 14 or 15 i was very conscious i looked around left right as i do them i okay should i do this is this okay does this look fine am i making a fool of myself all these thoughts go through your head 
right? And it goes through everybody's head who starts off for the first time. Why only you know training? It's with everything in life. Right? The first time you enter the room, you feel like awkward. You've got to kind of get there and, and mingle, and then you kind of become used to it. And it's the same thing with training. You've got to go in there. Um, unfortunately, that stigma kind of weighs too heavily on people, and they don't want to go through that. So for me, it's about making the gym or making a training session a fun place. Because if they laugh, they fool around. They're not being yelled at. They're not being told off. They're not being saying you're not doing this properly. What are you doing? Anyway, it's more like we're buddies. We're going to chat and we're going to get through this together, right? And and that when you kind of bring them in like that, really slowly, I think you see everyone kind of changing, and and they want to come in more often. So for me, that is the most important thing. And uh, once you can change that. I think you get a lot more people through the door. The fun aspect actually is an important point. Right? I feel that, and maybe it's it's how it's been ingrained into us from the time we were kids. Um, your physical education class in school was never really a fun thing. At least it wasn't for me, right? It was very like, I think it was regimented um, military style, or it was like I don't necessarily care. Or maybe I went to this kind of schools which had that problem. Um, wasn't really like okay it's fine it's an extra it's an extracurricular activity it's not necessarily a priority right um and then you go to gyms where all you're seeing are people who are visually focusing on surface level stuff but it's never fun it's like you're just going through the monotony of it so when you talk about fun and fitness and this is a question i've been asked because i sometimes talk about i said i genuinely enjoyed it i sometimes don't want to have a late night not sometimes most times don't want to have a late night because i know i won't train as well in the morning and i don't want to miss that the fun that that morning training is um yeah. how do you explain to someone who says how can fitness be fun because they it's been ingrained into them saying this is how it's always uh, you know it, it seems like too much work to be fun i mean you know honestly i think it all starts at home um when i have always kind of you know, my son for example okay he's 6 years old today uh when the pandemic hit uh the first time i kind of had to start training at home Right? and it was and i was training in front of him i actually thought that was the best thing ever because he suddenly saw me enjoying myself listening to my music feeling like i'm in a zone he started copying me right and when he started copying me he copied me with a smile on his face it wasn't like he was being like he was suffering through it he was having a great time right that energy of a child is is what is important and it's what i want to bring out in every class so it also depends on the kind of training that you kind of put people through right uh for me it's not about and it's it's not about you know how much weight you've lost that's my biggest issue once we kind of categorize training based on oh i have to diet oh i have to lose weight oh i have to do x y and z you're making it confusing and conflicting for yourself make it about just expressing yourself as strange as that sounds go express yourself be yourself don't worry about what anyone's saying or doing or watching don't look at your phone for that one hour just put on your favorite music and just go have a good time i know that sounds really strange because going through those movements and going through those exercises at some point feels like pain but it's sweet pain Uh, and anyone who's trained long enough will understand what i'm saying it's sweet pain it's it's a feeling of accomplishment do i didn't think i could do this but you know what i did it and that feeling can't be replicated with anything else uh what it also does over a period of time is it releases the right endorphins in your system right and that's scientifically proven this is not me saying it it's scientifically proven and that itself puts you in a better mood it gives you a high in terms of just being able to do things you didn't think you were able to do the right endorphins the right amount of serotonin in your body you feel a lot better about yourself generally and and once that starts happening then the gym becomes a fun place and it also depends honestly it depends on how you train there are people who go into a gym for 2 2 hours and an hour and a half and 3 hours and spend all the time in the world there there are people who make it really effective right make it effective exactly what i need to do i know i have a plan i have a structure i know what i'm working towards 
those people will be more successful. Everyone who has a plan ends up being more successful because they know exactly what they want to do and how they want to achieve it. So there's no wasting time. Oh, I, I know exactly the people you're talking about. Uh, you've been in those gyms where one person will come do four, four bicep curls and just look at themselves for 10 minutes, walk around, chat with someone and then come back to the next move. We've all seen those characters around, around gyms. Man, sometimes I, sometimes I want to just like laugh. Do you think that changed in the pandemic because we had to suddenly make it? No, it doesn't change. Just doesn't change. There, there's still those people. You just mentioned having a plan, right? I think that's an interesting one uh, because oftentimes people connect having a plan to having a goal and the goal is generally quantified. Like you said, that right? I want to lose this much weight or I want to put on this percentage or like someone's checking with this is my body fat percentage. You know, you're going down to the granular numbers. Um, like I, for instance, have been a person who constantly questions if I want to actually wear a, a tracking device when I'm working out or do I want to get that glucose monitor? And I sometimes wonder, is that me just trying to find a number to what I'm doing or should I just kind of focus on how I'm feeling? Um, how do you define a goal you set for yourself if you can't quantify it from weight in if you want to be fit? Because at the core level, that you, you do want to have a something you're working towards, but it shouldn't become just that number on the weighing scale. So um, how do you quantify that? So my goals are different, right? My goals are always, and, and everyone I've ever spoken to has said, set fitness-based goals for yourself, right? How much am I squatting today? How much do I want to squat three months later? Or how much can I bench today? How much do I want to bench three months later? Can I get 10 clean push-ups? Can I get my pull-ups done properly? Can I improve on that performance? Can I run five kilometers in under 25 minutes? These are goals that you need to set. I mean, you and I both are very fond of a gentleman called Darul. I wanted to crawl a mile yeah. after watching him. I said, I'm going to crawl a mile. Now, that is not going to be quantified in any book when it comes to, you know, whether it makes you look good or not. It was just, it, but it tests your fitness, right? Now, so for me, it's always been about setting the right kind of goals. I've never set goals like, you know, how much am I going to weigh six months later or I want to hit this particular fat percentage. I think those goals kind of come along the way as you start training regularly. Mm -hmm. You'll hit your goals if you kind of, you'll hit those goals if you set yourself some nice, good fitness-based goals and try and hit those. So the minute you start focusing on the right things, things happen. So for me, those are the kind of goals I want to set. Like I remember sitting down one day and this was at camp uh, with a with bunch of people. And uh, I was like, you know what? I just want to crawl a mile. And they were like, you've gone bonkers. I said, no, I just want to crawl a mile. <laughs> and they're like, where do you think this mile is going to happen? I said, it happened on the road. They're like, Surab Nas. And, you know, sometimes you become more accountable if you said it to someone else because then you're like, now I have to do it. Uh, yeah. So I purposely said it out loud to everyone at camp saying, I'm going to crawl a mile. I'm going to do it this weekend. And I'm going to do it here. And they all thought I was crazy. After a point, some of them even messaged me the night before saying, are you really doing it? I said, yeah, I'm showing up. If I competed, great. If I don't, I don't. Right? Uh, so sometimes you've got to kind of just set those parameters for yourself and then just go out there and do it. And and the feeling once you've achieved them is, I mean, I I, I can't put words to it. It's just another level. Yeah, I'm still running across my 5k in 30 minutes target. I haven't come to 40 minutes though, getting closer, getting closer. I hope you liked part one of my chat with Saurabh. There's a lot of stuff left to unpack, which is going to follow in parts two and three. If you can't wait for that, check out the entire audio episode on your favorite audio streaming app and stay tuned for the next clip to drop very soon. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button and smash that bell icon.